Guys, hi everybody, my name's Ronald Murdoch and welcome to Lean 30 Canals. I want to talk to you guys about something I find a lot of students can get caught out on when they're looking at really this overlaps of your uh, cost production and also then your um, especially your market structures question. Okay, so the first thing to look out for is when you're doing this is that um, what's our total revenue? What's the definition for total revenue? Okay, the definition for total revenue is your selling price multiplied by the quantity you sold. Okay, now again, if I'm looking at this, imagine if, I, if I'm selling these markers at 11 quid, nobody's going to buy them. So it's too expensive. So my selling price will be 11. Nobody buys them. So I'm not going to have any revenue. Okay, and, that, and that's fine. Now if I drop the price down from 11 down to 10 euro, okay, so one person's happy to buy them. Okay, Alan's going to come in and buy them. So I'm selling at 10 euro. Alan will buy one, and my total revenue will be 10. Now if you're following me over here, what's my average revenue? Okay, how do you calculate your average revenue? The formula for average revenue is going to be your total revenue divided by your quantity sold. So in this guy, case, guys, you can see that my total revenue is 10. I'm selling one, so that's gonna give me 10 euro. That's my um, average revenue. What's my marginal revenue? Okay, the definition for marginal revenue is the increase in total revenue from the sale of an extra unit. So here when I sell one unit, my marginal revenue is gonna go from being zero up to 10, and that's my marginal revenue there, it's 10 euro, okay? So now if we look over here at the second one, right? Let's say if I dropped, dropped my price down from 10 quid down to nine quid, um, Barry's going to come on and buy it, okay? So suddenly now, I'm going to sell um, an extra one, nine by two, would be 18, and that's going to be set then. My average revenue will be nine quid, and my marginal revenue is going to be eight. Now, what you want to look out for, right? This is what we cause a lot of confusion for students, is that, um, remember again we have, is that my margin, your marginal revenue is the increase from total revenue from the sale of an extra unit. So, I, I came in and I sold um, that, that market to Barry for nine quid, right? However, my marginal revenue only went up by eight. All right, only went up by eight quid. Although Barry paid me um, nine quid for it. And that's what can be very, very confusing. All right, so this one I want to draw your attention over here. And once you know this, it'll make it a lot more clear, okay? So what we have is, I can't price discriminate. I can't turn around to Alan and say, okay, Alan, you're willing to pay me um, 10 quid, so therefore I'm charging you 10, but Barry, you only have to pay nine, so I'm charging you nine. Okay, so I have to set one price across the board. So yeah, while if I drop the price down to nine quid, let's say, while Barry might buy it and I'll gain nine quid here, I'm gonna lose a euro, because I'm gonna have to drop the price for Alan. So nine minus one, if we're putting there my marginal revenue here, guys, is going to be eight. And, that, and that's gonna happen, and you'll see what kind of chip away these across the board, but you guys are gonna notice that, that that's, that's going on across the board. So if I do it again, let's say if I decide to, um, if I decide to sell, if you're following me over here, if I decide to sell three markers, uh, or three markers, I, I drop the price down to eight quid, I sell three, that's gonna be 24 euro, okay? Now what's my average revenue of selling uh, those three markers? 24 euros, my total revenue divided by three, that's gonna be my average revenue, is gonna be eight quid. However, my marginal revenue is only gonna be six, because look, my total revenue will have gone from 18 up to 24, my total revenue would have only gone up by six. So when I sell that third marker, my re marginal revenue is only gonna go up by six. And if, if you kind of jump back to where we have it here, you'll see the breakdown again. I decide to turn around and sell that third marker. I'm gonna lose a euro here. I'm gonna lose a euro here. Cause I'm gonna to have to drop the price again for Alan. So that's me minus one. I'll drop the price for Barry, that's me minus one. So overall it's minus two. Yeah, I'll gain eight quid here. But again, minus one, minus one will only leave me up six quid. So my total revenue is only gonna go up by six. All right, same thing at the end again, again, you go like, you know, if I drop the price down to seven quid, I'll sell four, you see it there, 28. 28 divided by four, and uh, the average revenue from selling my four markers, I'll take a 28 in total, the average revenue is gonna be seven quid. However, again, guys, you see, my margin revenue is only gonna go up by four. All right, and that's, that's what we have there. Again, same scenario, if you're kind of chipping back there again, the revenue's gonna drop, I'll lose a euro here every time and I'll only gain seven here. So again, minus one, minus one, minus one, so minus three, plus seven, will leave me up plus four. And that, and that kind of goes across the board. We can do this one very quickly here again. See the way again, if I size to sell five, I'm gonna to have to drop the price again for a euro for everybody here. And so that is going to, and I'll gain six, that's only gonna leave me up two quid. My margin in this case is only gonna be up two. So I'll gain six euro here, however I'm gonna lose four euro there, and that's why it's only gonna be plus two. The reason this is so important, right, and the reason I kinda of wanna drill this in, if you guys can follow me over here to your market structures curve, right, 
this is what we have it here, all right? And another way, like, if you're starting off drawing, your, let's say, your Monopoly, but the same thing for, like, you know, imperfect competition and perfect, and perfect competition and everything, when you're drawing off your average revenue curve and your margin revenue curve, this is why these two curves are separate. So, like, if you ask kind of people in class or sometimes Jan students, they don't really understand why that's the case. You know now. Okay, so let's look at it here, our average revenue. If I sell, and we can get it even there, if I sell, like, one marker, for a tenner, the average revenue is going to be uh, 10 euro. If I sell, so I tell two markers, my average revenue is going to be nine. You guys can see it there. If I sell two markers, my average revenue is going to be nine. If I decide to sell three markers, my average revenue is going to be eight. And that's exactly what I have here. I sell three markers, my average revenue is eight. And it's all the way across the board. If I decide to sell five markers, my average revenue for each marker is going to be six. That means I'm going to take in 30 quid. All right. However, if you're kind of chipping away and going back from there, like if I sell, decide to sell, let's say, uh, my first marker, my marginal revenue will be 10. If I decide to sell that second marker, my marginal revenue is only going to be 8. And that's what we've been calculating over there. Like I'll pick out a random one, let's say, if I decide to sell the fourth marker, right, what's my marginal revenue curve going to be? My marginal revenue It's going to be 4. 4 euro. And that makes sense there. If I sell 4 markers over here, my marginal revenue here is only going to be 4. And that's, 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 why, that's why you're getting at that. And that's why these two curves are separate, right? And like even then, if you're, let's say, drawing a monopoly, right? So like, kind of a random, it's no harm just going through it now, but like, let's say if you're drawing monopoly, we've got like price and quantity. So I start off always, I'm like, right, so that's my demand curve, that's my average revenue curve. Fire in my marginal revenue curve here. And then I put in my marginal cost curve. Now straight away, guys, I know, remember they want to maximize profit? I know the monopolist is going to try and produce here. He's going to produce our marginal costs, it's marginal revenue, okay? Remember marginal costs? We did it earlier in the previous video. This is your increase in total costs from book to next unit. Marginal revenue, this is your increase in total revenue from the sale of next unit. So if we see it here, the monopolist is going to stop producing at this point here. That's his equilibrium position, that's where he's maximizing profit. If he produces past here, he's making a loss because marginal costs, the amount of money it'll cost him to make those extra units will exceed the amount of money he's going to take in from selling those extra units. So that's where the monopolist is going to decide he's going to produce here at Q1. So we work across here, and he's going to sell here. He's going to sell as high as he can. He's going to sell there where that meets his demand curve at that point, and that's going to be his, his position there. And then, of course, we draw on our average cost curves. A little bit messy, I know, but that's, and that's it there. And then you fire over from your monopoly, your, uh, your average cost, your cost of production, that's your SMDs. Now I'll do that obviously in a much neater way, but like that's the that's what they're getting out with that when they're drawing those curves. So just <clears throat> that's what I mean earlier, like when I want to chip away at the margin cost curves and average cost curves and your demand, your average revenue, your margin revenue curves. Like sometimes you can find students who start off in these and they genuinely don't know what the curves are and they're gonna make it so so hard. They they when they scratch the surface those students get found out. So yeah, just make sure, we will go into those monopoly curves now later on in more detail, but that's what I want to make sure you've got covered inside out. Okay, thank you.